turn the rubric to them, mm -hmm. and they want a further conversation. Do you use yes. the rubric as a, uh, a talking point? Yes. Or how do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, it was actually terrific, and, and we had that come up a lot when we were team teaching. Mm -hmm. And because we were all using rubrics, I could look at that other instructor's rubric and be able to interpret some of the feedback, uh, some of the reason that they got that particular grade, the areas where they had issues. The other thing, it helped me remember that student's paper. When I'm reading 100 papers, I can't remember them all. And so it helps me um, defend or maybe reconsider whether I gave them appropriate grade. Okay, thank you. And I have one, just of course, one yeah. more question. Like, when you present this to the learners, do you kind of go over the rationale of why you're using rubrics and why it's important for you as the instructor as well as them, or that's a given? I think it's a given okay. with the students that I've been working with. Okay. So the students that I've been working with have been used to having rubrics. Mm -hmm. Um, that's an expectation of me, that I have a rubric that they can follow. But I think if you have learners who are not used to it, that would be an important point. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did you say that there's, that you found a way to actually get the information to be entered into a rubric for different assignments for, for one learner and compare them? That, that is something we're hoping of? for. That's road that needs to be explored. Uncharted territory, I guess. Okay. There's, there's no, no way to do that efficiently? Not in D2L. Right. Well. I know that some other campuses have worked on tying their campus outcomes to, um, to you know, um, assignments and things in D2L using the assessment capabilities in there, but the assessment capabilities are really not where, or, or at least in the last few years and what we've had here on this campus, they haven't been kind of what, what I was hoping for. And, and when you say you're hoping we'll have it on campus, have you tried it on campus? So John and I were experimenting the other day with you know, creating outcomes that an instructor could then <coughs> move into a rubric so as a department, you could have, these are the learning outcomes for this program, and then the instructor goes and grabs it and pulls it into their rubric so that can be assessed. John, what did you think? I would really love to, like, you all should have, have received an invitation to a Canvas course, so the, and you're all set as co-teachers, so uh, I encourage you to go explore it yourselves. Um, Canvas is new, it's new for me, anyway. Um, and I have not had a chance to explore it very much. Um, I was very excited about being able to connect learner outcomes and course outcomes, like the big goals of the course, to rubrics. Right. Um, and we can go through some of that right now. So I encourage you all to do that. You should have an invitation, and you just log on to canvas.list.edu, <coughs> and you should have this one of your options, uh, John Mark Sandbox, with a little rubric picture in there. And if you go into that, There's the activity sheet. If you want to click on links and stuff, there's best slides. Um, and you can either go to assignments, or there's a link to the assignment right here. You'll see all of these different, um, oh, that's just one. Let's go to all of them. This, this was, I thought, would be a, a fun thing to do. If you, if you grab one of these, we have 20-ish, 13, 18, I don't know, a bunch of the big person examples with different types of rubrics that you can try out, holistic rubrics, mm -hmm. analytic rubrics, single point rubrics, which you can learn more about here. Now this is a, a, we don't have enough time to go through all of this today, but as course members, you can go in and do this on your own at any point. Um, they all have the same paper, so you can use a speed grader, and it's, it's kind of fun to like see what that looks like. And in terms of actually looking at how these work, you really need to have students. So I don't know, John, if you can put in a bunch of fake students. I put in, <laughs> I put in one test student, but I, put, I made 15 different assignments. Okay. So that's the way, because I can't do 15 different yeah. test students, unfortunately. So some of these things, in order to experiment with them, it helps to have a sandbox, but then also to have some fake students 
an assignment that you can actually grade, you know, practice using the rubric. That's one of the things that I think is important when you're starting to develop a rubric. Before you use it on a student, test it. So take one student's paper or whatever it is you're grading and try out your rubric and you will find there are mistakes. So as you do that, then make notes of what you want to change. In order to make the changes, you actually have to make a copy of the published rubric and then make the changes in there and then you'll have to um, publish it and then tie it back to the assignment. Okay. Um, the, the reason you have to do that is to protect the students from you changing the rubric in the middle of the grading process. Not, not good. So, um, yeah, always try it out. That first one could actually be a student paper that you end up, you know, using what you've done as their grade, but you're going to learn a lot about how your rubric works. And I ran process. into this problem today, or yesterday, because I had, one of these is worth 105 points. It's like, oops, I guess this is a uh, yeah. 50 instead of five. <laughs> but, uh, for now, the whole site is with 105 points instead of 150 points. Yeah. Can't change it anymore. Just, just one thing um, I mentioned. Um, if you have these in D2L well, and you move to campus, they do not come over. You have to redo them. Is that a question or is that a statement? No, it's a statement. <laughs> okay. Just so let everybody know. Because I, I, I did a course from the detail too. There's one thing you have to redo. So if you do you have to redo the whole thing or can you yeah, somehow? Yeah, the rubric doesn't come in as well. Okay. The grading scheme comes in, but rubrics don't come with it. Okay. But it's not that hard if you have a big screen and open up your know, old course. Okay. It's copy it. Yeah. You do, it, it, it does report to work with you. And this is one of the things that I found in, um, when I went to outcomes here, so to set up these rubrics, you can go to setting up outcomes. You can create these large outcomes for the course. So one of the um, things is uh, integrative learning. This is a value rubric. So thinking about the essential learning outcomes of the university, there are these different value rubrics that have been created um, to look at, you know, any higher, insti higher education institution. So these are standardized rubrics that are out there um, that have been validated. So I'm really interested in, you know, how can we um, assess students' ability to integrate what they've learned into their lives and into their work. So that's why I chose this one. So there's experience and reflection and transfer and communication um, and the connections to the discipline are different parts of it. And you can either do that, or you can just create rubrics individually for different things. So in the outcome connected rubric. That's not very pretty. It's, it's not very pretty, you know, and it's my first time that. I no. know, <laughs> we're all learning. <laughs> but you can edit these, and you could either just create your own criteria on here, or you can go find an outcome um, from one of these and use one of these. So if you set these up at the beginning of the course, you can use the same ones over throughout. And those are you know, your essential learning outcomes for the course or your main learning objectives for the course. You can just keep revisiting those. One question about this, but never tried the outcome. To what extent is this for you and to what extent is it something the student sees? Because I worry about experimenting right. with something when right. the students are going to be watching the way. Right, and, and with some of my experiments, one of the things I found in using the rubrics, often I had to have like a fake assignment in the Dropbox to then trigger the rubric to be deployed in D2L, for instance. And so in this pass-fail course, I assigned 10 points or one point in the gradebook for that to make the rubric work, and I just told the students, this does not mean anything. It's just to make the rubric work. When thinking about the numbers associated with this rubric that John just showed you, I think that's where we need to do some research. Um, I think one of the benefits of having points associated with this is that it allows us to do some quantitative research. 
approaches with the data as opposed to just, you know, these qualitative rubric um, indicators. So I think I'd love to see what the analytics capabilities then allow us to do if we've got these standardized rubrics with points attached indicating where students are at and what that would allow us to look at over time. Yeah, that was my next question. Are there functions to be able to do that, to extrapolate that over? I think yeah. that's what we've got to learn from. I've been wanting to talk to Kim Arnold, who's working with analytics, and right. um, I haven't had a chance. Because that could be powerful. Yeah. I'm very optimistic about the power I think also in terms of the work of building rubrics, with Unison and with Canvas, there are going to be a lot more capabilities of sharing resources so that you won't have to do all the work. We could have, you know, maybe within a department, there are some standardized rubrics that everybody starts with. And then you add the certain elements for your particular paper, but everybody is, you know, starting with these rubrics to assess the learning outcomes of a program or a course, etc. Um, as Dan asked your question about whether or how much to share with the students. So if you, one of the things that we know from learning sciences is distributed learning is good. So the more that they revisit the same sort of big things throughout a long period of time, the more it's like, oh yeah, I remember this, oh yeah, this must be important because I, we keep coming back to it. So having them, and, and we also know that metacognitive elements are good. The more students reflect on their learning, the more, you know, like, oh, why am I learning this? What is the thing, you know, what is, what is why does my instructor want us to do this? Is also good. I, I agree on that, you know, once I'm confident in using that. Yeah. It's during that period where I don't actually where you're know not sure what I'm doing, <laughs> trying it out, changing it, coming back. To what extent is this shouldn't, can we shield this shouldn't from seeing that? Like we can mute the assignment in the grade yeah. after campus. So right. if I, you know, I can mute the assignment, they don't see what's going on there right. as I go through the multiple drafts of right. the paper, and I can use it to record the draft score and then add another to the paper. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if I'm doing learner outcomes, are they going to be getting like, announcements to instructor change learning outcome? Something like that. Yeah, I don't you think know? that they get. That's a good question. I, mean, I don't. Well, and I would think I that she'd think be able to. It's hard to do all this in a sandbox when you don't have yeah. any students. Right. And I would think you should be able to control what triggers student messages to from your end. Yeah. And invite your colleagues to be your students, yeah. and then you can be a student for them, and then you learn together. Did has anybody gotten the chance to get into the course and, and play around with speaker? Yes. Good. Is it, what do you guys think? Grading with the rubric in Canvas. Okay. I've, I've been using that work this semester. Have you worked with B2L at all? Yeah, I did. I, I, I used some That's right, you did. Yeah. B2L in the semester. Pro and con? Pro and con? Oh, Canvas is much nicer. Yeah. yeah. In a lot of ways. But the rubric has also a lot of features. Well, and I think just being honest with your students, too, and saying we're all learning how to use this. If you see something that you're wondering about, just let me know yeah, and yeah. ask. The, the rubric seems very straightforward. It's quite similar. It, it helps you get a 27-inch map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't know about the bubble capability. Yeah. But then, it, once you actually got them set up, one of the nice things about this, in fact, you need to know if it works on any time screen afterwards. So mm. you can actually, you can actually go and so maybe my thoughts of grading at O'Hare will have to change. Maybe that experience will improve over time. Get a little wi in your pocket. <laughs> anywhere you go. <laughs> Any other questions? I know a lot of you told me what you wanted to get out of today. Do you feel like you've learn some of what you wanted to learn today? I was having a hard time grabbing my idea of what the rubric actually is. Okay. And now I have a much better understanding. Okay. It's good. good. So one of my, my, I've always hated rubrics because I always felt like 
you know, it turns into a checklist for students, which in many ways it is, right? Yeah. Students know what their expectations are. Um, and in many ways, that's good. But the bad thing is, they say, all right, I've reached four points. I don't have to do anything more. Yeah. Like, I'm done. It's yeah. kind of like, I've just I've done everything. I've met expectations. And I want them to go further. Like, yeah. I want them to impress me, to wow me with their That like, is why I like pass-fail. I love pass-fail for that reason, because there's no ceiling, right? I can just keep pushing and pushing. And, um, and that's the same yeah. point rubric where you just have the criteria for the benchmark and then they can either reach it and then you say this, you know, you see the benchmark and do this, and then you get to give them all kinds of praise, which they like. Or you can do the negative and say, well, you didn't quite reach this benchmark. It takes more writing for the instructor to give that feedback, um, but it also doesn't sort of cap the limit of what they can impress them with yeah. or, or how they can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it gives you the bottom of where the benchmark is, so they know that they can at least meet that, but if they go above that, they, they get credit for them. Yeah. Um, but did you feel that like sometimes you get the feedback get too generic? Yeah, and, and to be honest, when I'm grading 100 papers, sometimes it will get generic and I copy and paste and I use that standardized feedback a lot. What I try to do though to make it feel more personal is when the feedback transfers over into what's going to go into their message in the gradebook, I always write a sentence and sign my name and then you know indicate that the standardized feedback is below. And I'm, I think that that helps to make it feel more personal and I can give them, you know, the, the praise or the encouragement or whatever it is um, so that it's not so generic. Anybody still need from me? <laughs> 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 that was quick. <laughs> I really do hate them, but I have too many students in that. I just really hate the idea that they think it's a checklist. And I kind of had a visceral reaction when you said they wanted to like revise based on their feedback. I mean, no, like I, I would have a rubric for a well, draft then. I mean, it's, it's yeah, not yeah. like that. Well, and, and so, you know, I think it's like, okay, these are my expectations, but wow me. Yeah. You know, you can do that. They need to know what you expect. They need to know how it's going to be graded, how they're going to be evaluated, whatever. But at the same time, you know, what can you do to really push them and to help them grow in, as individuals and to recognize the creativity uh, and encourage that creativity? I think it's all in how you use the rubrics. And, and you know, I think that that more kind of text-based um, or holistic type approach may be a better fit for what you're trying to accomplish. I've also found in D2L, if you don't set the points to match the assignment points, it's yeah. easier to give a whole degree. You know, you can say, yeah. this is what they got out of 20, this assignment is out of 50, so I think it's okay. easy. You can push people up or down based on what they actually need to. Okay. I don't know, I would be interested in like another conversation about yeah. learning rubrics and like how to translate learning objectives to the page and how, what language to use for the <coughs> categories. Maybe we need a workshop. So would I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to be uh, respectful of the time. It is now 9.30-ish, all 29 or whatever.